This is question 3, paper 2, from the SQA specimen paper for National 5 Mathematics. We're given this lovely regular hexagon, center M, and we've got a couple of vectors, a vector A being represented by this side of the hexagon, O, A, and we've got a vector B being represented by this diagonal in the hexagon, O, B. And in the first part of the question, we're asked to express A, B in terms of vectors A and B. So let's, first of all, let's have a look at a larger diagram. So express A to B. So we're travelling from A to B. Now, to introduce these two vectors into that journey, we would have to go the scenic route not directly from A to B. Let's go via O from A to B, but via O. So it's a long way round. So first of all then, for part A, we'll be saying travelling from A to B, let's go from A to O, followed by O to B. And let's see what that represents in terms of the vectors. So this journey that we've just done from A to O, now you follow this going, ouch, that arrow went right into you there. That means it's the opposite direction to vector A. Vector A is pointing from left to right. We're travelling from A to O. That's certainly significant because that arrow caused a bit of pain and that's the way to remember that if you're going against the arrow ouch that ouch has to be translated as a negative so a to o represents negative a not a followed by o to b is with the arrow no pain in that that just represents vector b now, in the same way that negative 3 plus 4, for instance, is exactly the same as 4 plus negative 3, or 4 minus 3, both, or all of these give us 1, um, we can write negative a plus b as b minus a, so long as the b is positive and the a is negative. So, travelling from a to b... That's the, the arrow going this way. Travelling from A to B represents B minus A. So that's part A. Let's look at uh, part B. This says express the journey from O to C in terms of A and B. So this is a much longer journey. Now for this part of the question. We need to look at the, the beauty of this hexagon and all its its wonderful symmetries. Um, we just look at how this hexagon is made up. You can imagine it divided up into six identical equilateral triangles. There you can see them. There's the, the last two just going in now. Six identical equilateral triangles. Now, the thing about vectors and lines that represent vectors is if the direction is the same, and travelling from A to B is certainly the same direction as travelling from O to M, and if the length's the same, and certainly the distance travelled from A to B by all this symmetry is the same as the distance travelled from O to M. And if we know that AB represents B minus A, then O to M will represent exactly the same vector. These lines that represent vectors, it doesn't matter where they start, so long as the direction's the same, and they're parallel in other words, so long as that direction is the same, and the distance travelled is the same, they represent the same vector. So this line here, O to M, will represent B minus A, as will the journey from M to B.
to C. It's parallel and it's the same distance as travelling from A to B. So this line here, the journey from M to C, represents the same vector. So, for part B, O to C, because it's OM plus MC, the journey from O to M plus followed by the journey from M to C, and we know that OM represents B minus A, and we know that MC also represents that same vector, B minus A, then we have two lots of B minus two lots of A. Or we could have said, look, this, this line OC on alternative, the line or journey from O to C uh, is twice the journey from O to M, and therefore it will be twice what OM represents in terms of the vectors A and B, which is B minus A. So either of these two, 2B two minus 2A, or two lots of the vector B minus A, either of these would do for full marks for this question.